What's going on guys? So today's video is going to be interesting. We are going to tow the Forest River Surveyor with the 2024 Toyota Tundra and we're going to see how this one tows versus the GMC Denali that we have which is also a half ton truck. Now something that's kind of interesting if you look at it from this angle you can see that the bed height is pretty much identical on both of these trucks. They're both four wheel drive trucks. Um, when you look at the front mirrors, you can even see that the mirrors are roughly the same height. Now what's gonna be interesting is, is taking a measurement of the rear receivers on both of these trucks and how far they are off the ground. Because as I've mentioned in previous videos, using the BMW Continuum Hitch, one of the really, really cool aspects of that hitch is the fact that you can really move it from one vehicle to another vehicle without making a bunch of crazy changes, without needing to take huge huge bolts and nuts loose. With the B&W Continuum, you pretty much need to pop two pins, slide it up and down a notch or two, depending on the different height of the vehicle, and you're ready to go. So what we wanna do first is take a measurement of the bottom of this receiver to the ground, and then we'll come over to the Toyota and see what that measurement is. And that's gonna help us determine what type of change we need to make to the actual hitch itself. Okay, so first we're gonna be here at the GMC. We're gonna measure from the ground and we are 15 and one quarter inches to the ground from the bottom right here of the receiver. Let's go over to the Toyota and take the same measurement. And on the Toyota we are 16 inches to the ground. So even though these trucks sit pretty much the same in terms of height, now this is gonna be an interesting one for you. Look how much lower the Toyota bumper is. So the Toyota bumper actually sits lower than the GMC bumper. The exhaust pipes coming off of the GMC though, actually make it lower to the ground. But you look at the little deployable step right here, it's probably just about even. I'm assuming your approach and departure angles on these trucks are gonna be very similar, at least from a departure angle perspective. But this is about three quarters of an inch higher up than the receiver on the back of the GMC. Do we need to make any significant changes to the BMW? I don't think we really do. It's gonna be interesting to test it on the Toyota in its current configuration, just to see if I'm gonna to need to make a change to the actual hitch height. I might have to drop it down one notch, but I don't think I'll really need to because three quarters of an inch is pretty much within that realm of the adjustment we just recently made last time we towed it with the Denali because we moved it an inch lower because it was sitting a little bit higher in the front than we preferred. So once we throw it in here, we might have to move it one more notch down, but we might not have to because three quarters of an inch is pretty dang close and your, your movement increments on the actual hitch head are in one inch increments. So when we dropped it down one inch to allow the front of the RV to sit a little bit lower whenever hooked up to the GMC, it actually dropped it down a little bit more than we needed to. So it should sit pretty much level whenever we have it hooked up to the, uh, the Tundra. And here is our hitch head. And what I'm talking about in terms of flexibility of how easy this is to adjust is the fact that most weight distribution hitch heads have two large bolts right here. And you bolt this piece up to incredibly high torque to the shank and there shouldn't be any movement right there. Furthermore, a lot of hitches require you to put washers right here and you actually tilt or adjust the hitch head. So the reason why you have to tighten these bolts so tight on traditional weight distribution hitches is because you don't want it to move after you've made your adjustments right here with the washer. And the angle of the hitch head on a weight distribution hitch with traditional spring arms is the pressure, that downward pressure that it's going to be applying to the L brackets on the A frame of the trailer. And that's going to be both your sway control as well as your weight distribution. The more pressure you put down on those L brackets, the more of the arching effect it's going to make between your tow vehicle and the trailer. And the more pressure that's being pushed down on those L brackets also creates more friction. And that friction is what prevents the truck and trailer from pivoting against each other when you're going down the road and that anti-pivot capability is essentially the sway control, right? It makes it more difficult for the truck and the trailer to hinge against each other. Now, I'm still curious about the sway control characteristics of the Continuum. We've towed several times with it and we haven't had any type of significant sway event. Even though a couple of the times we've towed, we've had up to 25, 30 mile an hour winds or gusts and it really didn't impact the performance of the truck. So, the ability for you to dial in weight distribution with this, there's also has to be some sway control characteristics taking place. I just don't know what they are. Um, again, I need to reach out to the folks over at BMW to figure out if this is primarily a weight distribution hitch or if it also has sway control characteristics built into it or if it simply relies on proper weight distribution to inherently give you more sway control. 
not 100% sure. But let's go ahead and take this thing, plug it into the back of the Tundra, and see how it looks. Okay, so we are all plugged into the hitch receiver on the back of the Tundra. And what I'm telling you again about the ability for you to adjust the height here is again, all you do is pop these pins out. And if this is sitting a little higher than we want it to sit, because again, this truck from the receiver to the ground is three quarters of an inch taller than the GMC. Well, if we find that this is sitting a little higher and the front of the trailer is a little higher than we expect, all we need to do is pop the two pins out, move this down one notch right here, pop the pins back in, and we should be in good shape. Now, something else we also wanna take into consideration is just because we're roughly the same height across both vehicles does not mean that the suspension on the back of this truck isn't gonna sag in a different way than the suspension on the back of the GMC. What do I mean by that? Well, this specific truck has air suspension on the back. I have the capability of raising or lowering that suspension, which means that if the truck whenever we load the weight of the coupler on the back of this from the RV, if the truck starts to come down and I use the air suspension to normalize the ride height, well then it's gonna be forcing this piece up higher and the trailer's gonna sit nose high. Okay, so I went ahead and dropped the hitch head assembly down one level on the shank. Uh, just again, because this truck sits three quarters of an inch higher in the back in terms of where the receiver is to the ground versus the GMC. So I think it just makes sense to go ahead and put it here because that's likely where it's going to need to be whenever we load the weight of the RV on the back. And again, with all modern trucks, they have really, really great camera systems. Okay, so they have this cool straight line that I can use. And I believe this truck also has the reverse trailering capability to get you going straight back if you need to. Okay, everything looks good. The uh, actual camera itself is not really fluttering like this. It's not doing that. That's just because I'm recording it. And auto just means I guess it's gonna come on. You have different types of lines you can see here. I can get rid of the top down view if I want so I can see a little bit clearer. And let's see here. I'm just trying to see if there's any other camera guidance that I can use. I guess I could probably turn it all off. Well, no, let's see. So that's the closest I can get to turning everything off, I believe. Okay, so we are backed up to the surveyor. Looks like I need to raise the trailer tongue about an inch. I absolutely love this tongue jack. If you haven't seen the video I posted on this thing, this is the Ultra Fab Phoenix 4000. It is the fastest tongue jack, I believe in the world in terms of like electric tongue jacks for A-frames. At least that's what their claim is. Um, this thing is super cool, check it out. I'm gonna lower it down real quick and then raise it back up just so you can see how fast this is. It's almost as fast as a hydraulic jack, honestly. Isn't that cool? This, that is awesome. Anyways, let's go and get backed up to it. I think we're right under it. Pretty much. Okay, let's drop it down. And to drop it down all the way so the jack comes up completely, you just press it twice. But with the continuum on there, I don't want it to actually retract all the way or I might hit that bracket. I can actually hear the airbags on the truck kicking in. So the back is raising up. And it should level out the rig. It's interesting because the air compressor on the back here, it's a little louder than I would have expected. It's not loud, it's just louder than I would have expected. The back is raising very slowly, but I can see it happening. And the question is, is what's that going to do in terms of the levelness of the trailer? Okay, so it's topped off, or at least it's gotten to a point to where it believes the truck is level. Alright, so, we've got a good amount of clearance down here. Let's go ahead and get that out of the way. Okay, so I need to raise the assembly up a hair. So I get the clearance I need to pop this into there. Things are binding up, so. All little learning lessons every time you use this assembly. There we go. 
There we go. Now we're in place. The chains again are going to slip through here. And I want to cross them. It'll go right there. It'll go right there. Let's go ahead and drop it down one more time. airbags kicking in again so whenever I took the pressure off of the coupler by lifting up on it they obviously dumped some air now they're filling back up again and I don't want to mess with this until I see where the truck actually stops I think that's going to be an important important step to follow okay so the truck believes it is leveled out let's go ahead and add some pressure to this just to get this cylinder retracted in a little bit. Right now it's not adding too much in terms of weight distribution. So this is gonna be kind of one of your challenging points. Right now, I guess I need to measure the front height off of the ground, the back height off of the ground of the trailer to see how level we are because um, with the airbags kicking in, it's gonna throw off some of my calculations here. And that's a really, really great feature of the continuum is that I can make rapid changes on the fly and I don't have to change my entire hitch head assembly because I went to a truck that has airbags. So again, the flexibility to use this in different tow vehicles, which you probably aren't gonna do too often, but if you have different vehicles that tow your RV, that flexibility certainly uh, plays in favor of this BMW over other systems out there. But yeah, let's go ahead and get a tape measure and we will measure the front and the back. So we're at approximately 24 and three quarter inches to the bottom of the I-beam section in the back. We're gonna measure it right here. So the front is just a hair lower. So we just have to raise the front just a little bit if we want. And I think we're probably set up pretty good. I don't think that is gonna work negatively against us. I think it'll actually work more in favor. So we'll keep it where it is. What does that put the PSI on here? Puts us a little over 600 PSI. I guess we can go a little bit more if we want to. Okay, let's put it right at 750 pounds. And this is an interesting thing. So when you wanna put your handle back in place, you can see it required me to pump a little bit so I can just use my needle valve here and let a little bit of it out. There we go. So technically we are probably about as good as we should be to tow this trailer with the Tundra. Okay, so we are all hitched up, have our breakaway in place, have our seven-way connected. Just have to check the lights on it real quick, which won't take very long, and uh, secure the RV, unplug the power, and we should be good to go. 